Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. So today I want to share with you by far the cleanest, all original 1981 P125X and it's an American spec bike. Uh, this scooter has 61 original miles on it. Uh, pretty much the story of it, it's been sitting in a garage for 40 years. So I don't know what the deal was early on. Maybe somebody just parked it, somebody passed away. You never know what can happen. It was just in the corner of a garage and it just had a layer of dust that built up on it. And, and then we had a customer up in LA uh, get it and want to resurrect the scooter and bring it back to life. So first of all, we had to go through the whole motor uh, typical with something that's been sitting this long, the seals have totally gone to crap. They dry up, they get very hard. Um, somebody tried starting the scooter and one of the seals kind of got dislodged and wedged up in the crank. So we had to go through the whole motor and pretty much we put a new crankshaft in it, uh, all new seals, gaskets, that sort of stuff, fuel lines and so on. So the cool thing about this scooter is in that wonderful orange color that I love. Very, very similar to the 2022 Vespa Primavera and GTS. So in the past, I've featured the P range of Vespas. Here in North America, they were imported from 1978 to 1981. And then shortly for 1985 is the PX150. So for North America, we got two flavors of the P-Range scooter in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, this one here is displayed, it's the P125X, so it's pretty much a 125cc engine, four-speed four transmission, they have the automatic oil injection, the indicators on them, and several other American spec items such as the taillight and the reflectors on the front. And by far the most popular option was the P200E. Also between the 125X and the 200E, uh, the 200 has electronic ignition. This still runs the classic uh, points ignition, but does have 12 volt electrics for the headlight and horn and the lights all around. So I wanna show you everything about this scooter because it's a well-documented piece that you can see all the original labels and just even the film on the floorboards hasn't been removed stuff i hardly ever see if you're curious about what the performance is like on the p125x here in north america they're good for about 55 miles an hour of a top speed they're not all that fast they were jetted very lean from the factory the meat the early california air resource board and epa emission standards so oftentimes they've been rejetted and upgraded with a pipe. Um, drum brakes front and rear, just like the classic P200E, no different. Uh, somebody up front, they've added these horns. That was a dealer added option. I've seen other P-series scooters from the same period, late 70s, early 80s, that have these same Fiam horns. Um, they're kind of hideous, but they kind of match the 70s style by putting a horn like that. Um, usually they're hastily wired to the battery as well, but they're on this scooter, so they're staying there. There's already holes made for them. Uh, moving on to the front, I'll kind of talk about all the stuff that makes this scooter pretty unique uh, versus the other markets, especially if you're watching this um, on the other side of the world away from North America. So you can see they have these reflectors that are added to both sides of the fender. There's actually holes drilled and there's little clips that hold those reflectors. Um, over all the years of ownerships of these scooters where they've passed hands, passed through, they've been restored. Uh, usually these reflectors are gone, so there's either holes or the fender's been replaced with a new fender that doesn't have the holes present at all. Uh, moving on down here, one thing that's unique from what I understand on the America's Spec uh, P-Series scooters, they have this return spring, this extra return spring on the front brakes. This scooter does have the original Pirelli tires that came on it from the factory. They do have quite a few cracks in the sidewall, but the customer owns the scooter, wants to leave it as original as he can. So um, we're not gonna bother replacing these tires even though they have cracks. They're just a classic tread pattern 
tire. So the hub has got all the original silver paint. Um, no one's painted over this because oftentimes somebody will just paint right over this zinc plated uh, bracket for the front brake cam. So that's pretty neat that that's the original zinc plating. It's very clean still. Obviously it was in a garage that was fairly dry because usually I see quite a bit of corrosion on that piece. Um, these never seem to survive the test of time being old style plastic. I've seen original ones and they always have a split. But since this is the original piece, a new reproduction piece would look a little different. We're just gonna leave that alone and leave that piece on there. So on the inside the leg shield where the glove box is, there's all the original markings as well. I've seen this tag, I think that's the serial number. Uh, during the assembly, they put that paper tag. That's usually long gone. Uh, for the North American market, they need to have a designation homogulation labels for the, um, the VIN number, the vehicle identification number, and also for the emission standards. So those are both very original to the scooter. Look how crooked this vehicle emissions label is. That was installed from the factory crooked, but that's the way it is and the way it was installed. Usually people pick those off, um, which can sometimes be a problem when re-registering the scooter in another state. Moving up onto the handlebars, this has all the original North American market switches. Uh, they got these little covers here, the turn sail, the engine kill switch that hasn't been broken off, um, the horn and the lights. All this stuff is all wired in there. The horns aren't working because it's got those aftermarket horns on it. Uh, somebody added an extra beeper for the turn signals. Again, that was like a dealer added option that uh, they probably charged 12 bucks for back in 1981, but it's still there and actually still functions. Moving on to the dash or the speedometer, you have the high beam and turn indicators, which are original. Um, these are pretty difficult to get. You can get a green running light indicator that's used on the European bikes, but not these original ones. Um, the speedometer, this is an original speedometer. It does have some minor scraping on the bezel. This uh, black finish on the aluminum bezel is usually pretty uh, fragile. Uh, oftentimes people replace this glass and it is typically a flat glass that's been used for replacement. This has got the original convex or dome plexiglass on it. Uh, looks really good still. And there's a neutral indicator. And for the North American market, they had to mark where 55 miles an hour, which is pretty much the top speed of the scooter. Um, but that's in red on the speedometer. And looking at the needle, you can see how vibrant that orange is on the needle. Usually within a year's time in the sunlight, that needle will fade to just a very faint yellow or just white of the rest of the needle. So it's got the locking glove box with the original lock, not a zaddy replacement. Uh, now the contents are in here. Normally you'd have a toolkit, an air pump, and I've seen the original owner's mail. There's a spring for the toolkit that's in here. Um, the owner of the scooter has probably taken all the contents from the inside of the glove box. Moving on down to the floorboard. These floor rails are all original, installed as they were from the factory. They have the original rivets, the way they would be from the factory. Oftentimes that stuff if somebody's painted the scooter, they've taken the floor rails off and they just use regular pop rivets to put them back on. Um, something I've never seen in all the years of looking at all original Vespa P200s and P125Xs, I've never seen where they didn't remove the film off the stainless steel strips. That should have been removed when the scooter was sold new, but it's still in place. Something I've never seen. So from the factory, it came with this film kind of like the film that you take off your uh, screen of your, your brand new smartphone. Uh, never been removed and I'm certainly not gonna touch it. So it has the all original American style fuel tap lever, which is a plastic lever, they're rather fragile. Um, An original fuel tap that functions as well. So up is reserve, center position's off, and down is the on position on these. So even the fuel tap in the tank is a different part number. It's got different routing. Uh, it's got the original Piaggio uh, Genoa sticker right here. The choke knob, 
And let's pop the cowl off and I'll show you all the originality of the motor. So looking at this motor, uh, we had it all the way apart, replaced all the gasket seals and the crankshaft on it. Um, it's got the original dark gray air box cover. Oftentimes the fan cover, the air box cover, they've been replaced with like chrome aftermarket pieces. Um, all these screws are all original. They're kind of a zinc plating that's kind of a, has a gold flash to it. Um, even this, the selector cover is the original cover, still in perfectly shiny, perfect new condition. Uh, the reproduction ones look pretty close to that. Um, you can see also it's got a Bosch spark plug cap. That's pretty rare. Those are pretty prone to failure, uh, but we're leaving it on there as it's one of the original parts. So you can access the points and make the adjustments underneath this rubber cap. It also has the original plastic cap that protects the nut. Um, I think this is a Bosch ignition coil right here. There is one part it is missing. Normally there'd be a little clip that holds this wire right here. I'm actually looking for one just to complete this so it's 100% because even that zip tie is original right there. Moving on to the rear shock, you don't see it much, but it's this like black, I don't, I don't remember what the finish is called, passivized or something finish. Parkerizers. Um, and you can see all the original copper brazing that they did when they assembled these rear shocks. And the rear tire matches the front. It's going to be the original Pirelli. So inside the cowl, this floor uh, or this uh, rubber strip is original. We didn't replace this. It has the rivet right here. And for some reason, I've seen this in the past. They put this goo, I think, just to protect uh, these connections because that's how it grounds out the turn cell as well. Actually, it's the inner one. I'm not sure what the reason is, but they did that from the factory. And it even has the original rubber right there. And looking down at the cables, they're all original. Same with the muffler is original as well. Very quiet. Oftentimes, the muffler, even after about five or 6,000 miles of operation, it's somebody's running poor quality oil, it could be coked up and in, uh, may need replacement even at that low miles. But since this is ultra low miles, has the original pipe, and I'll start the scooter, it's remarkably quiet. So moving on to the left side, it's even got the original center stand and rubber boots. They haven't rotted or split on the center stand. That's pretty remarkable. There is some little bit of a rash right here. That's probably from just the storage, a couple nicks in the paint, but still in really good shape. This scooter has been buffed. All we did is clean it. Uh, this can be even as lustrous as a brand new scooter if you just uh, compound all these um, painted parts, it would just really bring the shine out. All right, so let's start it up. We'll turn the key on, turn the fuel on, full choke. It is a little warm, so make sure the ignition switch is on run. Give it a tip. And turn the choke off, and it has a very nice low idle. It's very, very quiet. It's one of the quietest vintage bikes I've ever heard. Uh, these original P125X motors were uh, baffled pretty good. They were a very thick wall, so they add for a very quiet engine for a vintage Vespa. So you can see the headlight gets brighter because it runs off the magneto. You can see some of that two-stroke smoke that's built up. Pretty typical. Uh, there is a lot of two-stroke that's built up in the muffler from all the years, so it needs quite a bit of riding to burn all that out, but we're not going to take it on any long rides to, to burn that out. So you turn the fuel off, and it's a very quiet, nice running bike. So I thought you'd be interested in that. Right here I'm standing between 41 years of Vespa history. Uh, pretty ironic that they come out with nearly the same color pretty much 40 years later. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. If you're looking for parts to fix up your vintage Vespa or you're looking for fine accessories for your new Vespa, check us out on the web, ScooterWest.com. Until next time, Robot here.